I'm going to bring the gentleman from Cisco up. We're going to get started. And I'm really pleased to have them come and present. They've presented before at other OpenShift gatherings. But this time, it's a little special because they're um, my wonderful case study that brings together some of the CoreOS wonderfulness and the OpenShift wonderfulness. And they're going to tell you all about it. So thank you again for coming. Thanks, Diane. Thank you. All right, are our mics working? You can hear us? Great. See if I can make them go forward. So since we're speed dating, I'll make the introductions quick. My name is Mike White. I'm an architect at Cisco. We work in the IT group called Enterprise Platform Services, where we deliver uh, platforms and middleware technologies for all of the developers at Cisco. And with me today is Nara Tatapali. He's a senior engineer, tech lead, and subject matter expert on our enterprise container hub, which we deploy using CoreOS, now Red Hat's Quay registry service. So that's what we're going to talk about primarily today. But let me set some uh, context first. I think I'll answer all Diane's questions as I go through uh, this slide. Cisco's been on a multi-year journey, and we've called it different things over the years. We've called it our, our global data center strategy, our cloud-native transformation. Um, but what we're really trying to do is deliver services to our developers in a programmable way. So back in 2015, uh, when Docker and Kubernetes were getting popular, and OpenShift rolled out OpenShift 3 that included those technologies, we started evaluating technologies and seeing if we could do container as a service. So go beyond just platform as a service. Could we run whatever technologies the developers wanted on a common platform? So in 2016 is when we really got into the initial uh, delivery of some of these services. And uh, while we've shared a lot of our OpenShift stories with you over the years at these forums, uh, one of the things we didn't highlight was our enterprise container registry story. Um, we actually deployed Quay prior to OpenShift uh, in, in 2016. We saw that developers were going to really pick up this container thing at that time, and uh, we felt that there was a need to centralize that function within Cisco and have a good place to maintain all of the uh, images that were being created. Last year at this forum, we shared with you our, uh, the fact that we were in production with OpenShift 3. We had a lot of large uh, customers deploying in a cloud-native fashion on this platform across multiple data centers. And as we go into the future, we're building out OpenShift on top of OpenStack and looking forward to a lot of the uh, tectonic administrative features that will be brought into the product going forward. So with that, I'll turn it over to Nara and he'll share with you some of the uh, considerations we had when looking at a container registry. Thanks, Mike. Hey, everyone. So when we, start, when we started to decide that we will deploy our enterprise container registry at Cisco, we came up with different requirements. Some of the requirements are highlighted here. Main requirements were it should be on-premise because of the security reasons. We don't want our images to go to outside public cloud. So it should be more secure, and it should be deployed on our data centers. It should be high available. Uh, we wanted to deploy this enterprise container registry in different data centers. So as of now at Cisco, we deployed at three data centers. And also, the images getting pushed to one data center should be automatically replicated to the other two data centers. Uh, we also, even though we give our developers full access, uh, whatever they can do, we wanted to restrict where the images they can pull and push to. So as of now at Cisco, we allow the developers only to pull and push the images from our enterprise container registry. Um, it should also have a good integration with LDAP. It should have, uh, so when our image is pushed to enterprise container registry, uh, Cisco is very big with security. So an image should be automatically scanned for vulnerabilities and report back any critical vulnerabilities we have with that image. And also it should have good UI visibility and it should have good vendor support. So keeping these requirements in mind, we evaluated different products. Some of the products we evaluated were Docker Trusted Registry, OpenShift Internal Registry, Artifactory, and Quay. 
Um, Docker Trusted Registry was just evolving at that time and didn't have all the features which we wanted uh, from our previous requirements. So we didn't go with Docker Trusted Registry. OpenShift Internal Registry was just for internal Red Hat, and it was not useful for us because we have other products working for this. Artifactory, as of now at Cisco, we use Artifactory for our CI, CD stuff, but it didn't have the required UI features which we were looking for, and also there was no vulnerability scanning stuff. Keeping all these requirements in mind, only Quay was fitting our requirement, so we went up and deployed Quay in our Cisco data centers. So as of now, this is our um, current uh, deployment of Quay. So we deployed this Quay in three data centers, data center one being the primary, data center two and data center three are the secondary data centers. Each data center has a load balancer in front of it. This data center can be individually accessed with the load balancer URL. All these three load balancers connect to a global site load balancer. Data center one being the primary, we deployed many components in it. Uh, we have Quay, we have build servers, we have Clare for security scanning. We are using data, uh, Postgres for database, and we are using Ceph for storage. As of now, the database is only active and passive. The main primary database is in data center one. It's a manual failover. If the database goes bad in data center one, it's a manual failover to the other data center. So these, data, uh, these Quay images are deployed on individual VMs, uh, so they're not deployed on OpenShift as of now. Um, after we deployed Quay, we had a lot of success stories. So these are a few of the success stories I, we wanted to share with you. This is from our side, from the administrative side. Um, we had good support on architectural guidance. So when we wanted to deploy uh, Quay on different multi-data centers, we got good support from the Quay team. And whenever we had some issues with bugs or anything, we can directly send out an email to Quay, and they are very uh, quick to fix the bugs. So whenever we, the developers, whenever the developers, whenever they have new requirements, they will just ask us for these new requirements, and we talk to the Quay team, and they're very responsive to give the new required features. Can I jump in here, Nora? Sure. Yeah. These first three bullets are, are really important to us. Um, we've been really, really pleased with the relationship with, with Quay and, and CoreOS so far, and I'm sure it'll continue with, with Red Hat. We've got a good partnership here, but um, being able to give you guidance on how to set this up, how to scale it, um, the, the response time has been, been really impressive. Um, so those first three bullets are super important to us. Uh, so I think at Cisco we upgrade Quay every two, three weeks because uh, they give so many updates and uh, regular frequent upgrades. So we upgrade Quay every two, three weeks at Cisco. Um, and the vulnerability scanning is very good. So whenever we push an image, it tells us where the image is vulnerable at, which layer of the image is vulnerable. And also it tells if there is a fix available for that image, for that vulnerability. And we, have, we are using this API. So Quay comes with a lot of APIs. In our automation, we have this uh, CI, CD pipeline automation stuff going on. So in this, we use these APIs to automate most of our stuff. Okay, so this is from the developer perspective. As of now in Cisco, we have more than 5,000 users on our enterprise container hub. 420 organizations are being created, and we have total close to 10,000 repository, and each repository will have multiple tags. As of now, the volume at Cisco is around 12 terabytes. So we have around 12 terabytes of images deployed on Enterprise Container Hub. Um, initially, we thought that build system was not that popular. Uh, we didn't want to go with this build system because Quay comes with integrated build uh, system. Uh, we use our, our own Jenkins stuff to build images and push to um, Quay, I mean push to ECH. Uh, but surprisingly, all of our developers, they just love the build system. So they just get the Docker file or they just get the Git SEM URL and they just deploy to ECH directly. I think the, the success there comes from the ease of use, right? Um, I didn't think it was gonna be all that, that useful. I'm always on the command line doing Docker build, Docker tag, Docker push, and uh, I think this just gives developers a really good way to start simply and, and, and get going, uh, and so that's, that's been uh, a surprise for, a pleasant surprise. And also we got good feedback on UI. Uh, even though if you're not familiar with any of the container registry, you can just log into the Quay UI, and it's very useful. Uh, it tells you where the tags are, how to do stuff, and all the things are very easily done on the UI side. And also we use a lot of notification web posts. 
So whenever you have um, pushed an image or something to it, it can give, um, with the notification thing, it can give you, if that image has any vulnerabilities, you can get an email or a Slack chat message or anything from that. All right, my turn again. So putting this back into larger context uh, again, what you see here is that we're trying to provide a programmable lifecycle for our application developers from end to end. Um, I shared this slide last year, but I brought it back again so that we could talk about the middle uh, bar there where we've got our enterprise container hub. But our developers at Cisco are able to establish their uh, tenancy, if you will, through a programmable API provision their OpenShift projects, and also manage their continuous integration and, and continuous delivery pipelines, uh, all programmatically uh, in a cloud-native fashion. So Quay and our enterprise container hub sit right there in the middle. Uh, once you're provisioned and ready to start developing, uh, you gotta start building containers, right? You gotta have a place to store them. And, uh, Quay is our, our spot for doing that. So let me dive down into that just a, in a little bit more, more detail. One of the things we're, we're trying to accomplish with this programmable cloud native model is to speed delivery of applications and functions to production. So in the old days, we had a lot of uh, bureaucracy and process and, and gates in the way of developers deploying their code. And we're trying to uh, stay out of that production flow to, you know, from, from dev through stage and into production. But we're trying to maintain our security and our standards uh, by giving visibility back. With frequent reporting and aud auditing, we can, we can catch vulnerabilities and get them re remediated much more, more quickly. So pretty standard flow here. Developers are checking their source code into Git, using Jenkins to, to build the container image itself and compile the code. And at that point in time, we're running uh, different application scanning tools uh, to determine you know, whether the code is of good quality and has all its test cases, et cetera. Once the app image is checked into the enterprise container registry, Quay does the, the Claire image scan on it. And at that point in time, almost immediately after checking your image into the container registry, you can see if it has any vulnerabilities. And the U I don't know how many of you have seen the UI. It's very detailed and even provides which libraries are vulnerable and which versions you could upgrade to in order to remediate the vulnerability. It ranks them high, medium, and low. And it, it's a really powerful UI for helping the developer manage the libraries inside of their containers. Now, as Nara mentioned, our enterprise container registry is the only pipeline into our OpenShift platform. You can't pull direct from Docker Hub. You can't deploy from your, your local laptop. You've got to pull from the enterprise container registry uh, and, and run it in OpenShift. Now, we don't have any blocks between there. So you could technically go to Docker Hub, pull down an image, and push it right in here and push it into production, which is a little bit scary. But we can uh, audit frequently and report back and, and find out what's going on in those images and get the fixes uh, in. About six months ago, I don't know if, if you guys remember, there was a struts vulnerability. And our InfoSec department was really concerned about it. And they wanted to know, do we have that vulnerability running in any production systems? And for us in OpenShift, it was relatively easy to answer that question. We went into OpenShift, got all pods, got the SHA ID of all the images that were running, and through those APIs that Quay provides, we were able to interrogate the vulnerability database and find out if that vulnerability existed in any of our containers, and then take it back to the uh, developers to remediate. Luckily, we didn't find it, but uh, it was cool that we could pull the running images out of the system with Kubernetes APIs and then use uh, Quay's APIs to check and see if uh, that particular vulnerability existed. All right. 
So as, of, as I mentioned earlier, as of now, Quay is running only on individual VM host. We wanted to deploy this Quay on OpenShift. There are many advantages of deploying Quay on OpenShift. Um, as of now, we are maintaining, uh, if we want to, uh, depending on the load, if we want to increase our uh, Quay running containers, we have to individually de uh, extend the VMs, deploy Docker on it, and run Quay on top of them. If we, are, if we deploy it Quay on OpenShift, we can just scale up and scale down depending on our needs. So our future goal is to run Quay on OpenShift. And also we need, uh, we wanted more tighter integration with OpenShift. Um, as of now, we don't know what tags are running in OpenShift because op OpenShift is not only the platform which is used as of now at Cisco. We use different platforms to run images. So we wanted to know if we have, so we have so many tags, right, in ECH in our Enterprise Container Hub. We wanted to know if these tags are part of OpenShift or not. This will give us more idea on audit stuff like if you have any vulnerability running in OpenShift, it can show up on Quay. So we wanted to have more tighter integration with OpenShift. Um, and also we need better admin visibility features. So as of now, if I'm a super admin in Quay, I don't have access to all of the repositories. I know it's a security thing, but um, if te teams come and say that, okay, this tag is not visible or this tag is not working properly for us, we have to manually go and take the ownership of that repository and do all that stuff. We don't want to do that for thousands and thousands of repository. So I think um, uh, we need more better visibility, uh, better admin visibility features for this one. And also, as of now, as I told you, that we deployed Quay only in three data centers. So we are getting lots of complaints that uh, people pulling from remote locations, like in Europe or somewhere, they're not able to pull and push the images that fast. So we want to deploy Quay in multi more data centers now. That's the uh, long-term goal for us. Nara, before you move off on this one, um, you say we want to run Quay on OpenShift. Don't we run one of the components on OpenShift already? Yeah, so we started moving one component now, uh, components by components. As of now, we are running Clare on OpenShift. We are running like 80 parts of Clare on OpenShift because we pushed like 10,000 images now. Yeah. So we wanted to increase that Clare uh, to 80 parts. So as of now, we are running 80 instances of Clare on OpenShift. Yeah, that was a, a real easy scale-up operation, uh, as you might expect, running on top of OpenShift. Um, I think I was the one that complained when my uh, <laughs> images failed to, to, to get scanned and, and the guys just went and scaled it up. So I think what, there's a lot of uh, potential there as we go forward to run more and more of the components of uh, the container registry on top of OpenShift as well. So I think that might be the end of our slides. We've got just a minute or two left if there are any, any questions. If you have a question. If you have a question, just raise your hand. We can get you the mic. All right. <laughs> Hi. So I know that you're uh, you're you're using Quave to um, to scan for vulnerabilities. How do you measure the effectiveness of that scanning? How do you know that the vulnerabilities that you're scanning are catching everything? You know, I'm not a uh, vulnerability expert. Uh, I'm hoping that we can trust Quay. I, I know that they are plugged into all of the different CVE databases. And uh, any time that our InfoSec has approached us about a particular vulnerability, that's already been uh, updated in the, the registry. The other thing we didn't mention is that Quay's, uh, it doesn't continuously scan, but it continually updates so even after you've deployed and passed the first vulnerability scan, if a new vulnerability is brought into the database, it'll update that, flag it, and send that notification that Nara was talking about. So um, while I can't attest and certify to the, the completeness of the vulnerability database, we've been very satisfied that uh, we get the, the info quickly. Any other questions? Yeah, I think this is an important point too. We often get asked on the product management team, you know, like, can you talk to our security teams? Can you make them feel good about, you know, putting the system into production? Because it's it's new stuff, right? Containers and Kubernetes and OpenShift. Um, what they start to realize is when you're running a fully immutable environment, you're managing all your deployed apps through these images, you're doing scanning and have all this automation it might actually be more secure than what you're doing today, right? And it's a real eye-opener for the security teams. We've seen it 
over and over again on, on deals. And so, again, if you, if you need help having those conversations, we're happy to do that. And, and we have great stories like this to, to emphasize. So um, I guess if, if there's no more questions, we'll, we can, oh. Oh, there. All right. Oh, we're going to really make Joe run this time. <laughs> Has there been any thought put into running this in like a disconnected environment or how you'd go about actually pulling in updates to CVEs and things like that into this system? The CVE updates are automatically pulled in. That's part of the, the Claire product. Right. So if you're in the, in the disconnected environment where you don't have access to the internet oh, to pull know, those in. Disconnected. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, sorry. You know, I'd ask the, the Quay guys, if you can find them here this, this week, ask them that, that question. Um, that's a good one that we haven't had uh, particular experience with. I bet they have a solution, though. I bet yeah, they should. I think, yeah, we'll have to. That's not <laughs> me, unfortunately, but <laughs> we'll, uh, we can follow up on that. All right. Great. Well, thank you very much. Um, these guys, this is your speed dating moment. Check these guys out. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thanks,